have a problem. Right? My, and my problem is that I use Vim. <laughs> and and uh, to get Vim to do anything remotely fancy or you know, customize it to my needs, I need a VimRC. Uh, and every time Vim lags in a large file or it's just a bit slower than I would like, I keep thinking about how like, I don't really need my Vim to handle every possible VimRC. I just need it to handle the VimRC that I have. And there's a whole bunch of functionality in Vim that I just I don't even use, right? Like there's a whole like tab engine, for example, that like I just don't care about. And the the only tab settings that I use for my my tab length are like four. So why does it need to handle like a tab length of three? Like who uses tab lengths of three? <laughs> like, you know, this is the kind of code that I would imagine is inside Vim that goes, okay, like someone set the tab to four, just like handle it and insert the number of spaces accordingly. So I keep thinking about it wouldn't be cool if I could just take Vim and take my VimRC and jam my VimRC into my Vim and just do a whole bunch of like inlining and unrolling and simple stuff and just throw away everything else that I will never use. So then at the end of this, I would have something that's both smaller because it doesn't have stuff I won't use and faster because it doesn't have stuff I wouldn't use, right? The idea of doing this in general is called partial evaluation. So favorite example of this is, um, so you think of a program as taking static input and dynamic input. And static input is essentially known in advance, before the program starts executing. And dynamic input is only known once the program starts executing uh, to, you know, to produce some output. So a favorite example of this is anything with a configuration file. You know, I, I, use, Vim, I use Vim, but like Emacs is the same problem, like you know, your, web, your web servers. So wouldn't it be cool if we could actually just take the program and take the static input and just jam it in like I was describing and do simple transformations like inlining, constants, and unrolling loops. So what does that look like? So going back to that example I had earlier, if the tab width is not used anywhere else, then I can just do that, right? And that saves me a variable lookup, and it saves me like allocating space that's not needed and all that, all that other fun stuff. So that's constant inlining. And what about loop unrolling? So again, same code. If I know that I'm going to insert a space four times, why don't I just insert a space four times? Pretty straightforward, I think. So at the end of this, I would have something that's called a residual program. So you can think of this as essentially evaporating away all the parts of the program that I don't need. So it behaves exactly the same as my original program on that static input, but it's faster. So the program that would do this is called a specializer. So a specializer takes a program and some static input, jams the static input into the program, inlines it, unrolls, and does some other simple program transformations, and then gives me a residual program that can take only the dynamic input and produce the same output that the original program would have produced given the static and the dynamic input. So we call these programs specializers, and we say in the terminology that a specializer specializes a program with respect to some input. So I'll take a slight detour, and let's talk about interpreters versus compilers. So Python, for example, is a language that's usually interpreted, and an interpreter usually kind of looks at instructions one by one and interprets them. It like changes its own state or performs some action in the outside world. And these programs are relatively simple to write, but they're also slow, because they have to essentially consider each instruction one at a time. So in contrast, we have languages like C, which are typically compiled. So a compiler will kind of look at a whole source program, do a whole bunch of work, and generate a, another program that's usually in a different language. Um, and these are harder to write, because it, for, for one thing, you have to handle two different languages at once. But the output that they produce is usually faster. Um, so it wouldn't be nice if we could have both. We could have something that's both simple to write as well as fast enough for our purposes. So a researcher called Yoshiko Fudamura was, talking about, uh, was thinking about these things in the early 80s. Because what he wanted to do is he wanted to write software in BASIC, uh, which is not the, the fastest language uh, interpreted. But he wanted the output to be fast, like Fortran. But he didn't want to write Fortran. So um, then he was thinking about this and he thought, OK, so if I take an interpreter and I specialize an interpreter with respect to some source program, and then I do a whole bunch of inlining, unrolling, whatever, and I get a residual program. That residual program is essentially a cut-down version of the interpreter that only knows how to do the things that the source program knows how to do. And that can take whatever dynamic input I need and produce some output. But this program, that I've, this thing that I've created, this residual program, does not have any dependency on the old interpreter, and it runs by itself. So it's, you, we've created a standalone program. So that's pretty cool. We've compiled it somehow without involving a compiler. So thought about this some more, and he thought, OK, let's, you know, let's, let's take this one step further. What if you specialize a specializer itself with respect to an interpreter? So you take a specializer, and you jam an interpreter into it, and you do a whole bunch of inlining and unrolling. And at the end of it, you have something that can then take some source code that the interpreter knows how to inter uh, interpret and output uh, an executable, a standalone executable, just like in step one. 
So what we've done essentially is we've made a compiler because that's what a compiler does. It takes a program, uh, it takes some source code for a program and outputs a standalone executable. So say the Python interpreter is written in C and we have a specializer that knows how to specialize C. So it takes the Python interpreter and outputs something that can then take Python source code and output a standalone executable. This is cool. Um, final, trippiest step. What if you specialize a specializer? So you take a specializer, you take another specializer, you jam one specializer into the other, do a whole bunch of inlining and unrolling, and then at the end of it, you have a cool program that can take any interpreter written in a language that the specializer knows how to specialize and output an equivalent compiler. So we've made a compiler compiler. <laughs> it's pretty cool, pretty cool. So why would someone want to do this? In, in the 80s when Yoshiko Fudamura came up with these ideas, um, people went ahead and was, were like, okay, let's write some general purpose specializers. But it turned out that they were very difficult to write. They're not, they're not easy programs to write. And also the speed ups that they provided weren't really as fast as people were hoping for. So still, the idea of specialization like, gives us an uh, interesting insight into the difference between an interpreter and a compiler. Because a specializer isn't either, but it sits somewhere in between. You know, the fact that you can use a specializer to an interpreter into a compiler is pretty cool which it means it allows you, instead of writing a, a compiler, which is sometimes hard and error-prone and tedious to write by hand, to just write a compiler, sorry, an interpreter, which is relatively straightforward, and a specializer, and then jam them together and get a compiler for free. So this is also important when it comes to correctness, because you know, um, compiler bugs are pretty frustrating, and if you just didn't have to worry about that at all, that would be pretty great. And so far, I've avoided the use of the word optimization, but has what we've been doing being optimization, I would, I would argue yes, because you have to statically analyze a program and like do some loop unrolling, constant learning. And I think this is a good way of thinking about for what optimization is or a good entry point into learning about those things if you're curious. So I mentioned that in the 80s, this, this idea didn't really go anywhere. But in the present day, we have things like PyPy and Truffle and Growl and LVM, whose entire value proposition is that if you write your language a certain way, then you can get a just-in-time compiler for free. And what is a just-in-time compiler but the second Fudamura projection? It essentially lazily, partially evaluates parts of your program and turns uh, things that were previously interpreted into things that are now compiled. And also, you know, it just gives you faster programs. Like I, st I still would like this specialized Vim. I think it would make me very happy. So that's essentially all I have. Um, here's some resources. There's um, the, the original paper here. Uh, there'll be a link to my slides uh, for following shortly. The Wikipedia page is always good. There's a much longer talk, in which in some ways this talk is a summary of, called the Compilers for Free, that goes into the details and gives you even the sample language to like talk about. But you know, I think that talk is either 30 minutes or 30 minutes to an hour long, so you didn't really have enough time for that. There's a textbook by the people who uh, did some interesting um, research into uh, partial evaluation. We're like, hey, you know, here's all the stuff for free. Uh, some more um, resources, and then finally, this really interesting talk about a fourth Fudamura projection, which is going even further than the three that we've covered just now. So this is, you know, this is really all I want you to take away from this talk. <laughs> and a you know, friend is like, oh, so. <laughs> Here are my slides. <laughs>